today. I know uh, there's a lot of things Ron, uh, Dan's going to get into. Some introductions to Ron. And uh, pretty exciting day. So let's kick it off, Troy, if you want to start us off today. Absolutely. I would love to. One, I want to thank everyone for joining us this evening. And uh, I know we haven't had AMA for that. Um, and Dan's going to get into a lot of them. Uh, and I really just wanted to start off by one, thanking a lot of people. One, I want to thank the community for standing by us, enjoying the game, seeing what we're doing, seeing how we're building a real company in a, uh, an area that is very difficult to go ahead and make your wave in, not only in the racing business, but Web3 and fantasy sports. And I hope everyone realizes that's what we're doing. Um, I wanted to thank Dan personally. I think the company thanking Dan, I think we all will and have uh, for dedicating basically the last eight months to a year, uh, keeping the company afloat by raising the capital um, that I know Dan's going to go ahead and uh, announce um, in a very more uh, dynamic way. But I personally want to thank you. Um, with the company, the growth that we're doing. Um, and again, I know Dan's going to really uh, introduce and dissect, but with the news coming out to the public, one is we brought an amazing person on into the team. Um, Dan's going to speak about Ron in a big way, but I want to thank him for believing in us and, and joining the company. In the racing side, um, which hopefully people have seen, uh, we've had TaylorMade, who is the largest consigner, which basically is what the community really looks at, is the sales and the auctions of horses. TaylorMade is the single largest uh, consigner in auctions for weanlings, yearlings, broodmares, everything except two-year-olds. And they joined our team as a strategic partner. Uh, and I think that was an amazing um, attribute. We all know that the Jockey Club Equibase is behind us um, out of the last article um, that we've seen from Blood Horse. Again, showing that the industry is really getting behind us. We uh, were at Saratoga, our Naira uh, relationship, ABR, American Best Racing, uh, Day at the Races, and even Fox Sports. We're expanding our, um, basically being in the forefront of a lot of things that they're looking forward to and seeing what we're giving into the racing game. Um, also on a, a front, we're literally speaking to more racetracks, one racetrack in particular, which I know that we've seen a lot of uh, questions or some questions is we are in uh, aggressive talks with Woodbine. Uh, being able to do a lot with them in the near future, which we're really excited about. We do believe we'll be bringing on other racetracks also as strategic partners, which I think is is really giving us that um, that pat on the back of belief, again, of what we're doing in the game. So I don't really want to take much time um, with this Discord, because I think this Discord is way bigger than just uh, the racing industry. I really believe that we're really making the, the forefront. And I know that Dan uh, has been working his ass off. I know Dan has uh, really been excited, looking forward to this. So I just want to again say thank you for the team. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Gavin, uh, Paul, everybody that's in the in the back, really putting their time, dedication, Srini. And um, again, Thanks for being there for us, and we will be there for you. And I'll uh, kick it off to Dan. Yeah, uh, a quick. We should Ben. We should get a drum roll going right now before before yeah. Dan steps up. <laughs> a little drum. And, uh, <laughs> thank you, Troy, and uh, Dan. Take it away. Uh, thanks, Squid. Um, Troy, thank you for those very nice comments. Uh, this is all a team effort. Um, 
Uh, Troy is very humble about the stuff he's doing in the background, um, uh, developing and managing all the relationships with many of these strategic um, partners that are incredibly instrumental in um, invalidating uh, our legitimacy in the space and helping us navigate the space and really helping us uh, to achieve things that I'm going to talk about that are truly going to uh, be incredibly exciting for, for both us and the community. So <clears throat> why don't I kick this off with first thanking everybody for taking their time on a Sunday evening to be here. Um, we have been working around the clock uh, for a long time behind the scenes. You see some of the things, you don't see a lot of the things that are going on, and I'm here to fill you in on some of that stuff. I have a lot of alpha today to share with you. Um, we received uh, more than 50 uh, questions uh, that we'll try to address tonight as well. Um, just a lot of content that I'm very excited to share. So thank you again for being here tonight. I'm gonna try to get through this, at least my part in the next hour. Uh, might go a little uh, longer if you miss out. I'm not sure if we're recording this or not, but um, uh, hopefully we'll be able to, to get you as much information um, as possible in the next hour. So let me start by saying, I know it's been a long time since we've had an AMA like this. Um, we've been heads down, we you know focus on execution. Um, as the industry shifted a little bit, we took a position that, you know what, we're going to let the Discord develop through the community itself and, um, and really kind of stay low while we're building things in the background and jump in when big things occur. I think we're today going to change back a little bit to our old platform where we're going to elevate the communications with the community. I know a lot of people want to hear things more frequently, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But um, just wanted to acknowledge that. We're also developing other ways to communicate. Um, so we'll be um, developing a cadence around um, the managing uh, team, uh, um, uh, publishing medium articles that provide updates, strategic updates, content updates, development updates on the company. Uh, the technology group will be publishing development uh, updates consistent with what some of the best practices are in the space. Um, so you can look for a lot of that and we'll also develop more of a cadence around communicating more frequently with the community, especially as we have a plethora of uh, content and developments and updates and enhancements coming up. So a lot of content. Um, I forget, you know, I have to stop and pinch myself sometimes because there's so much here and there's so much to share that um, I sometimes like forget how much we're just scratching the surface. And I think that's a good entry into just kind of a recap of how we got here, a little bit on the timeline, and where we are today. So I'll start with that. Um, we, you know, we feel like it's been forever, but it really hasn't. The development of the concept, Troy and I got together uh, at, towards the end of 2021, late summer of 2021, and we spent a few months really developing the framework uh, for Game of Silks. Uh, we launched... Uh, our first fundraising in January of 2022. That's like a little over a year and a half ago. Um, and once we raised that capital, uh, we opened up in February our social channels. This Discord didn't exist um, uh, a year and a half ago. It literally started being one of the founding members of the Discord um, and watching it go from zero to 100 uh, and, then, and then literally take off from there. Today we're 24,000 strong. <clears throat> February of 2022 was the launch of our Discord channel and our Twitter channel. Uh, in May, we released the sale of our first digital assets, our Genesis avatar. That was followed in June of 2022, just a little over a year ago, uh, by the airdrop of our Sky Falls land. In October, we released our first yearling crop. That's not even a year. And that was... Uh, everything we accomplished in 2022. 2023, we're barely seven months into the year. In January, we announced the partnership, our partnership with Naira and Fox Sports, followed by uh, the announcement in March of the Jockey Club relationship, followed uh, by the release of our land map and the redemption of land, followed in April by the launch of our inaugural season, of racing and our racing portal that allows everybody to view entries 
view results, and access rewards and redeem them. In May of this year, just a few months ago, we announced uh, the addition uh, of uh, Srini, our CTO, who came from DraftKings. He ran their Web3 um, platform, uh, and he came to join our team and take over technology. Um, <clears throat> that was in April. Um, and uh, following that, uh, we launched our payment admin portal, which allowed us to begin to disperse and distribute and track awards uh, so that we could actually begin to start racing. In July of this year, we began our marketing launch. And you've begun to see some of those efforts, um, uh, which are pretty incredible if, if you've had a chance to watch um, some of our coverage on Fox Sports, on America's uh, best racing. It's pretty incredible, and it's just scratching the surface. We're in discussions about amplifying significantly our content, which I'll talk about a little later. Um, in August of this year, just a couple of, uh, just a week ago maybe, we announced uh, the launch of our onboarding uh, platform, which allows you to more seamlessly access our platform without any experience associated with Web3. So rather than having to create a MetaMask wallet, to create a Coinbase wallet, to fund the Coinbase wallet and transfer it to MetaMask and then connect MetaMask to Game of Silks, you no longer have to do that. You can just literally log on, create an account in a Web3 environment. We spawn a wallet in the background that's fully custodial um, and uh, uh, actually non-custodial, allowing you to do whatever you want with it. And it's in the background, so you don't have to learn any of that. Um, and there's more and more enhancements coming, but we've accomplished a lot during this period. And I'm about to announce a few other major developments um, that are super, super exciting. Um, where does that leave us in terms of uh, the rest of this year? I can tell you that working very, we are working very diligently on the release of the land uh, map click and mint functionality, which will allow you to begin to acquire land around your existing farms the fractionalization and syndication functionality, stabling. Uh, we're working very diligently around new yearling mint and some incredible functionality uh, and enhancements that I'll talk a little bit about that are gonna really dynamically change the game in a really great way. Uh, the metaverse, uh, and finally, more utility within the game. We'll be introducing later this year some really interesting uh, competitive gaming within the game. So new utility, new games within the game, new ways to earn rewards, new ways uh, to extract utility from your assets. Lots and lots of um, pretty cool functionality that I think everybody's gonna really enjoy hearing about. I'm gonna glaze over um, this stuff today, uh, but I really wanna just let everybody have a good understanding of where we're going and how much work is being is taking place behind the scenes. Um, and that leads me to my next comment, which is, why have we not released the full MVP yet? I know that we promised to do so. We actually had the entire MVP built in October of last year, and we decided after a lot of testing and a lot of pondering around what we thought was best for the community and for the future of the game, not to release it in its form and to enhance it in a variety of ways, and I'm gonna to speak to that right now. So first, there was a major shift in the economic environment around both Web3 and just global, the global economy. Um, all of the international upheaval, uh, all of the um, uh, challenges with regards to the US economy that really destabilized a lot of this sector. And then of course, all of the bad actors uh, that created a lot of negativity around Web3. Uh, all of those things truly did affect the environment and caused us to really pause and say, we need to get through this. We need to ensure that we have the resources and the capital and the momentum and the foundation to ride this wave and get past it on the other side. And so we did it responsibly. Um, we slowed down a lot of our development just to ensure that we can get through this. And I think that was the right decision to make. We also prioritized the racing portal for the inaugural season. So 
We recognize that it was very important at the crux of our offering. The heart of the game is to be able to watch your horses race, get updated on when they're racing, and actually get paid when they win. And so that became a priority for us. It happened fast and furious, and we literally shifted all of our resources uh, to ensuring that when we launched the inaugural racing season in April of this year, that it would provide for all the promise uh, that we made and create all the utility, um, the core utility for the assets that this community committed to. Um, finally, um, I'm gonna say, I'm just gonna comment on a couple of other things. One of the really big catalysts that really slowed down our development was the relationship with the Jockey Club. We signed up with the Jockey Club um, in the middle of last year, and that created a massive, massive opportunity for the company and for the community and for the platform. But it also required us to rebuild a lot of our technology. Um, prior to the relationship with the Jockey Club, we were acquiring data from as many as 20 different sources in very rudimentary ways. And our architecture around our database and around our functionality contemplated all of that. When we signed our deal with the Jockey Club, it made our lives so much more easy. It provided us with access to endless amounts of content to power our platform and a promise that would allow us to grow much faster. But it required us to rebuild a lot of the technology. And so we put on pause the release of a lot of the functionality because at the end of the day, when we're done with the things that we're building right now, I think everybody will appreciate the significance uh, of the, uh, the value of this new relationship with this incredible organization that's giving us access to unprecedented uh, data that's gonna allow us to do incredible things. Finally, um, we built this company in, you know, during the heyday of Web3, when the mantra was to be a pure decentralized Web3 platform. Um, the original product uh, to be released in October of last year proved to be very clunky. Uh, and that's no uh, exception to what Web3 does. Web3 is no different today than Web1 was uh, in 1994 when you had the World Wide Web. Uh, you had Internet Explorer. You had very little you could do, um, very little functionality, and it was very clunky. We've come a long way since then, but in Web3, we're still working it out. And we, do, we believe that providing a seamless experience as opposed to a clunky experience that has bugs, that's slow, that's very costly to operate, was in the best interest of the company and in the best interest of the community. And so we decided to wait to get all those things in place. Um, we want to make sure that the experience of the is to the difficult, uh, to the significant cost of operating a Web3 platform. Uh, and we want it to be seamless and almost feel like a mature Web2 gaming application. Uh, additionally, we made the, the strategic decision to shift the development of our platform from outsourcing it to bring it in-house, um, which will save us a lot of money, um, but it requires us to, um, and it will give us a lot of control over the IP, but it requires us to really um, uh, step back and slow down to build that foundation before we can accelerate. Uh, finally, I, the last comment I'll make as it relates to all of this is uh, the onboarding uh, of a Web2 user to Web3, taking the masses and introducing to them to this game proved to be very complicated. We all take it for granted because we've learned how to create wallets, how to buy crypto, how to, how to navigate that landscape, but the majority of people have no clue. And we want to make sure this is an inviting application for everybody. Uh, and uh, we felt it was incredibly important to slow down, um, to freeze a lot of our growth initiative, to ensure we had the foundation correct. And we believe we're there today. Um, no excuses. Uh, we're late on delivering a lot of this functionality, but we believe that it will serve the community and the prospects of our future incredibly well. It was a strategic decision that we all made internally and we're very happy for it. We're just a few months away from delivering so much functionality that will really take us to the next level, and I'll talk a little bit about that today. Um, the major announcements that I'd like to share with the community um, start with 
um, welcoming uh, Ron Lanowski uh, to the company as our president and COO. Uh, Ron will introduce himself in a bit when we invite him on stage. Uh, he comes out of this industry. He's worked in this industry for a long time. He's a veteran and an icon. Uh, he was responsible for building uh, one of the first ADWs, one of the betting applications. Large uh, firms uh, in Web2. Um, he ran UBET and he ran ExpressBet. He'll tell you more about his background. And we're very lucky to have him. And I'm very happy to introduce him to the community tonight. The second announcement uh, is actually a very, very significant announcement uh, that is not public. You're the first ones to hear this. Um, I circulated an email about two hours ago to the internal team uh, at Game of Silts because they actually were not privy to this either. On Friday of last week, Game of Silks closed a very significant capital round to fund the continued growth of our platform. The details of this round will be released to the press first, but we felt it was important to share this wonderful news with our community. Our new investors are a group of sophisticated institutional uh, investors um, that have been following our platform for a long time. Some of them have participated or are participants um, in the platform. They come with a very significant amount of experience in investing, deep pockets, and support for the company, and will provide a further foundation for our growth. This environment, uh, I've been trying to raise capital for eight months. Um, eight months ago, the market shut down. And the environment for raising capital for any business was near impossible, let alone for Web3 games. Uh, following the meltdown of FTX and Celsius and a bunch of other blowups that created significant negativity in the space, a lot of companies shied away. And there is very, very little activity in the space today. It's almost impossible to raise money. And yet, Game of Silks is a shining light in the sector. When we announce this to the public in the next two weeks, we expect that this will be a significant momentum to reigniting uh, interest in Web3 and to really demonstrating that there are companies out there that are incredibly successful and incredibly um, significant in terms of develop functional um, applications that are gonna change the world. And we are one of those companies. And I don't have to tell you that, all you have to do is look at the fact that we've been able to raise this capital in this devastating environment and economy. So I'm very proud of the team. I'm very proud of the community. I'm very grateful to our new investors for believing in us. Um, and uh, uh, it's quite significant. When you hear the announcement and when you see what I'm talking about, um, uh, you will embrace this and literally pat yourselves on the shoulder for having recognized one of the greatest uh, one of the greatest projects in Web3 early on. I will tell you that when the public hears this news, they will pay attention to what we're doing uh, and it will create significant momentum uh, in our platform and in activity within our platform. So look forward to that. Um, We've asked our internal team not to trade assets during this period before we shared this publicly with the community. Now that we have, um, you're welcome to do what you want with it, but it is not public information to the general population and it won't be probably for the next two weeks. Um, so I can tell you that this is, you know, uh, I, I've been spending literally all my time doing this. It's taken a long time, um, but we're there and we're very excited to be there. And you should all be proud to be a part of this project and to be co-investors alongside um, this, uh, this incredible uh, team of people both inside and outside the company. Um, with that, uh, I'm going to stop. I'm going to pause for a minute. I'd like to bring Ron on stage to say a few words, to introduce himself, say hello to the community, um, tell you a little bit about himself. Uh, and then after... Um, after Ron is done, I'm going to uh, deep dive into uh, a bunch of the questions that many of you have submitted and provide you with some answers. So with that, uh, I'll turn the floor back over to Squid or to Ben to introduce Ron and bring him on stage. Ben, take this one, right?
Yeah, I'm good. You guys got me. Okay. Hey, well, first off, uh, welcome, or I guess I welcome myself to the Silks community, which I'm very proud to be uh, now part of this uh, fantastic community. Um, I think just a couple simple words. Uh, I think Dan and Troy really asked me to come and join this thing for really two words, to scale and deliver. And I think actions speak louder than words, um, but we're going to scale and we're going to deliver. Um, and I'm really, really excited about uh, Silks. It's very rare, I'll give you my background a little bit, that you walk into an uh, early stage company or organization and run into so many hardworking and most important, smart people. Um, and I can tell you guys from my experience that I've not seen a company position like this. Um, and then generally speaking, um, just to get a little into my background, um, I started off in the 1.0 world. I was around when it was a 9,600 baud modem. Mark Andreessen and uh, Mosaic and America Online was there and built a few companies along the way uh, in the uh, internet gaming or gambling space. Um, first one was a company called UBet.com, as Troy mentioned. Um, we were the first uh, really company to start doing sports wagering on horse betting. We took that company public. It was NASDAQ listed. Um, I then joined a company, started there by myself. Um, when I left, it was doing $300 million in revenues, had about 250,000 um, customers in the uh, United States and Canada uh, wagering on horse. That company called Express Bet. And then from there, we uh, built out a significant um, international business called XBNet that was fixed odds wagering doing about 750 million. And while we got to get our sea legs and there's tremendous, tremendous opportunity in the United States or North America, there's just as much opportunity as, you know, in out years as we start to expand um, internationally with, you know, um, other jockey clubs that we'll form relationships with such as uh, the United Kingdom and others. Um, and I'll just close by saying, you know, I'm really looking forward um, to delivering uh, all of the cool features and um, that Dan mentioned. And let me tell you something, Dan's got a lot more things in that brain than what he just mentioned. Um, so I'm looking forward to the challenge of uh, keeping up uh, with the pace of uh, Dan's brain and um, idea. And uh, more importantly, I'm really looking to become uh, part of this community. Uh, and I really appreciate all your guys' support to date. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Ron. I know everyone in the community is going to be excited. I got to know Ron uh, the past couple of weeks, and I think we might have to start a, a dictionary for all your good uh, one-liners for the community. <laughs> uh, but from here, you know, uh, Ben, if you want to help uh, Dan with the questions, or Dan, you want to roll through, and then we'll. See where it goes. I do know that uh, Dan has looked at the sheet and picked a lot of questions, so we might not have some time to bring anyone up. But if you want to put your question in, if you didn't get a chance to put it in the sheet, go to the main stage uh, chat and just write the questions. And Ben will normally do his thing. If there's time at the end, uh, he'll ask your question on stage. But uh, Dan, all you. Thank you, uh, Gavin. Um, and Ron, thank you. We're very lucky to have you as part of this team. And uh, very excited for the community to get to know you and to see um, uh, your work in action and your contributions to our success. Um, we we received over 50 questions. Uh, I spent about three hours going through them and bundling them into categories that I felt would allow me to address them uh, holistically, which I'm going to do. You'll recognize that I'm answering your question I won't be reading the questions, but you'll recognize it when I talk to it. Uh, and if again, if there are any questions that people would like to add, um, we do have the chat channel available and open. And if we have the time, uh, we will um, try to answer those as well. Um, there's a lot of alpha that's going to come out in this. Um, there's a on point I think you'll understand context um, where I'm going. So why don't we just jump into it and I'm going to start with the first macro category which is um, questions related to the economy and this includes questions related to um, getting paid, 
percentages compared to the real world and other things. And I'm kind of bundled everything related to the economy into one. What I'd like to start with is, you know, many of you were not here from the very beginning. Um, so I'd like to kind of talk about the history of the uh, economic model of Game of Silks and take us to where we are today and where we're going and just refresh everybody's recollection uh, and use that as a context to answer many questions. So let's recap. We started this business with a uh, decentralized autonomous organization model in which all rewards were going to be paid out in two proprietary tokens. Um, and uh, you were earning uh, a token that theoretically could trade in a secondary market. We migrated to a cash or ETH-based model to address two issues. One, the regulatory environment that we thought would create risk for us early on. And if we didn't create a token of our own, we would be less vulnerable to that risk. Two, actually there were three reasons. Two, there wasn't a company or a gaming platform around that had demonstrated success using a proprietary token. And three, and probably most importantly, explaining the economy and how it operated was very difficult. In fact, I dedicated an entire AMA and an entire deck that I developed to try to explain it, and it was still confusing to people. So in light of that, we said, you know what? We're gonna launch this game in a very simple way you're going to earn the equivalent of rewards that can be liquidated, if you want to, without having to think about anything. Uh, and that was the evolution of our economic model into a, what I'll call a cash-based model. Our design with the We launched the model with a relationship to the real economy of 1%. Every other game in our space, when I say our space, I mean fantasy, blockchain, sports, makes up their prizes. They're like, we're going to give away digital assets. We're going to give away $500. We're going to give away whatever. We don't do that. We tie our rewards to the real world. Uh, we're creating a model that is designed to simulate ownership of thoroughbred horses that race in the real world. And our rewards are tied to that. And so that gives us little control over how much we're giving out on an absolute basis. But on a relative basis, it does give us a lot of control. And so we've promised that our model will contract and will expand based on our success. And what that means is, as the community grows, many things will happen from an economic perspective that drive supply and demand. And necessarily, that will grow the economy, just like it grows the economy in the real world when more people populate a country. Australia, 30 years ago, had a population that's probably half the size of what it is today. And today, when you go to Australia to buy land or to get a job um, or to do anything, it's much more expensive and you get paid much more money because there's a much larger population. In our game, the same thing holds true. As our population expands, as more people play the game, there will be more demand for our assets. There will be more competition around the game, which will necessarily drive demand, drive the appreciation of price, which will also drive the growth of the economy and the rewards. We will grow our economy as our game economy grows. And you will see that very palpably in the coming years but we cannot project what that's going to look like today. And we're not going to speculate on what the economy is going to look like next year when racing season starts in April of 2024. Needless to say, I can tell you that we expect this community and our economy to grow materially in the coming months as we invest significant effort and dollars into development and marketing which will necessarily attract a lot of people and help us grow the economy. So look forward to that and enjoy uh, the way it's structured right now. I can tell you that we've done a significant amount of analysis on the economy, the way we structured it today. Um, and there's plenty of opportunity and it's very attractive 
uh, to play the game at this level, although we believe that it can grow um, exponentially uh, and attract many, many people at even higher levels. Um, remember that our business is a first impression. It's a first of its kind. It has never been done before. I talk to countless people who look at what we're doing and say, why didn't I think of that? It seems so intuitive and so simple. And most businesses do. You know, the idea that uh, Uber exists and that people go from home to home, private citizens driving other people, it's very intuitive, but nobody did it until somebody did it. And it's the same thing with our business. We are blazing a trail in online gaming, sports gaming, fantasy gaming, horse racing, in a manner that hasn't happened in a very long time. And we're excited to be that leader and to really be a part of this revolution. Um, our goal is to operate our economic model responsibly and to create and manage a sound economy, no different than the Federal Reserve does in our country. And there are mixed reviews around what they do. But we have that responsibility, and we will manage that economy for the benefit of everybody that participates in it, ensuring that it's sustainable and that it will grow healthily and that everybody that's a part of it will enjoy it in the way they contribute. The economy will be driven by the new price of assets as the community grows, period, end of story. And we're not ready to publish that right now because we don't have a crystal ball. Um, we're also currently planning for the next season and we will release all of the relevant information around the next season as we get close to the next mint. And I can tell you that the work involved in planning for the next season, both in terms of pricing, in terms of merchandising, marketing, sales, content, um, uh, rewards, utility is massive. You know, internally we're spend we will be spending, you know, uh, weeks on end to finalize uh, and put a bow on what next season looks like, and it's going to be materially enhanced to the way we launched. No differently than if you look at the first season of Poker Stars, and I was there, I was player number 46,000. And I can tell you that the platform, when it launched in 2001 and where it went, is completely different. Same thing with, um, with DraftKings and FanDuel and any of these online betting platforms and many of the platforms that Ron built. Um, we're at the very early stages. And I know I said that a year ago, and I still mean it. Uh, we're getting close to the next season, and we're racing to plan for it. I'll, I'll sum it up by just saying, at the end of the day, it's all about community. The bigger we get, the more people are engaged, the bigger we're going to become, and the more fun it's going to be, and the more exciting it's going to be for everybody that's involved. <clears throat> so that hopefully answers a lot of questions that were asked. Uh, I'm going to move to the next category. I have about, about 12 categories that I've bundled, and I'll go through most of them very quickly. Um, there were some questions around conflict of interest, um, uh, concerns around um, moderators in the community or people involved in the company, creating syndicates, marketing, things like that. I can assure you that we will adopt the best practices in online gaming to ensure that there is no conflict of interest. And we are in the process of reviewing our policies uh, and enhancing them to ensure that there is not only um, there isn't only uh, a best practice in place, uh, but that there is best practice in place to ensure that there isn't even a perception of impropriety. So uh, we'll continue to promote that and to publish that uh, and to alleviate any concerns related to that. A um, lot of questions relating to our roadmap and timing. I'm going to answer it holistically. We're not going to give you any hard dates on when we're delivering functionality on this call. What I can tell you is that we have a well-documented development path and we will deliver everything that we promised and more over the course of the balance of this year. We are being very responsible and very careful to ensure that what we deliver is thoughtfully released, uh, is bug-free to the extent that anything can be bug-free on its early release and that it addresses all of our long-term uh, architectural uh, issues so that we're not releasing things that have to be rebuilt like we're doing right now. 
Um, and I think you guys are gonna be very excited by all of these releases as they come out over the course of the coming months. Another question that was asked was around the sale of land and the timing uh, and the functionality associated with that. So I'm gonna spend a few minutes talking about that. First thing I'm gonna tell you is that the click and mint land, the click and mint land map is almost ready for release. What that means is you'll be able to go onto the land map, you'll be able to look at your real estate holdings, and you'll be able to buy and sell land around your properties and expand your farms uh, or speculate and do whatever it is you like to do. At the moment, we are not requiring anybody to pay the 25% tax to keep their horse in the community farm because we haven't released the land map yet. Once that's released, we're going to make an announcement around when that's gonna kick in. And I can tell you that you will have to hold enough land, a one-to-one -one relationship to land and horses, if you don't wanna be taxed in a community farm. And that's gonna come soon and that's gonna create significant activity within real estate in our metaverse. I'm not gonna go into a lot more details regarding that, except to tell you that it's gonna be something that's gonna kick in very soon. Um, and it's gonna create a lot of demand uh, within the land map. Um, and I'm very excited for it. Um, and I'm looking forward uh, to that being implemented. Once that's done, uh, we will begin to publish uh, the release date for stabling, which is gonna come behind that. Um, it's not an immediate priority right behind it, um, but it is on our uh, critical path and it will be released in a timely manner. Um, there was a question around founders participation in Discord. Um, we've taken somewhat of a passive approach uh, to allowing the community to really control and moderate and, uh, and manage the momentum within Discord. Uh, we are very present there. I, uh, Discord is open on my desktop on my second window 24 seven. I'm always looking at it. I see the comments, I see the momentum, I see the communications and I communicate with our community team when necessary to address anything that comes up there. I know Troy does the same thing and Ron is going to do the same thing. Notwithstanding that, we will make more of an effort to engage and jump in. I can tell you personally that I play the game. I own tw over 20 horses in the game and I have multiple horses that have raced multiple times. What I have not done is broken my maiden yet. So I haven't won any money in the game yet um, and I'm waiting for that to happen and hopefully it'll happen soon. But I'm pretty optimistic about my stable uh, and I've, be, I've remained a little passive uh, in, in, in being active in buying horses, um, largely because I really don't want to get in the way of the community right now. But once this community grows a little more, and to the extent we uh, continue to allow people internally to play the game, I will be very active in the game. Um, and I can tell you that from the perspective of a person who was not in the horse racing industry looking in from the outside and now being on the inside, uh, it delivers to me exactly what I expected. I talk about my horses, my horses racing to people. And they're like, oh, you own race horses? And, and my response is I own race horses in the game of silks and it's the same thing. And it feels exactly what I would expect it to feel like if I own the real thing. So. We're very much, and I expect that many of you feel the same way. And as we amplify the portal and the experience and the community and all of the interconnective functions that bring to life the social aspect of the game, it's gonna be 10 times better than what it is right now. And I can't wait for that. Questions about affordability. Now this is really um, something tied to the economy, uh, but I segmented it because I thought it should be spoken about separately. Um, our game is designed by nature to appeal to all types of players at all price points. The game of silks is a simulation of the sport of kings, which has historically been really uh, relegated to very wealthy people, right? Initially, the reason it was called sport of kings is because you had to be noble to be able to play the game because it really required a lot of money. Even in the real world today, it requires a lot of money to play the game. And uh, our goal was to create an environment where anybody could ultimately play the game. Um, and through syndication and stabling, you can. 
Uh, however, there will be entry that we will design in the game that will accommodate people at lower levels eventually and also at higher levels. There's a strong interest from a lot of people in the community that want to play the game at even higher levels sooner. And we're addressing that and we're building it into our model uh, to really kind of come up with ways where we can accelerate um, the, uh, the growth of our parity to the real world. And I can't share a lot of details on that right now except to say there's some really cool things in development that are going to blow everybody away around how fast this economy can grow if everything comes together the way we expect it to. Um, uh, I will tell you that comparable games in other sectors, games like Rainmakers and Sorer, offer the ability to play for free uh, to spending millions of dollars a person on the game. Um, and uh, we intend to create similar types of entry points as we grow the community and as the game begins to mature. Remember, we don't even have a year under our belt. The racing season, our inaugural racing season started only in April, and we're sitting here in August. Um, we've accomplished a lot. It seems like we've been here forever. We really haven't. Um, and when people look at what we've achieved in the period we've done this, um, it's pretty spectacular. We get those comments every day. Um, next question, next bucket of questions were around the OG 5K airdrop. Um, I'm going to be the first to say mea culpa. We jumped the gun on announcing the airdrop early. We felt like there was a lot of tension in the community around it, and we wanted to address it. Um, I want to ensure all of you that uh, the asset we deliver uh, will be a high value asset and in sync with many of the enhancements that we're working on. The airdrop will occur when we're ready and when it's prioritized after some of the major functional releases that are currently in development. I will not give you a timeline for it, except to tell you we made the commitment to deliver an incremental component of value to holders of avatars of 5,000 or less, our early adopters, and we will do so at the appropriate time with, you know, uh, with the appropriate um, functionality. We want a lot, there are a lot of moving pieces in the game and in the utility, mostly around enhancements, and we just want to make sure that we're not jumping the gun on releasing something that we're going to have to then rebuild. So hopefully that answers your questions as it relates to that. The next question, which there were probably about a dozen questions around this, and I lumped them into one category, and that category is avatar utility. Um, so I'm going to answer your questions uh, by going through a list of about five or seven or eight different things. Uh, the first is, there was a question regarding staking. Uh, we do not have staking of avatars currently on our roadmap. Uh, so that we are considering at the moment for the person that asked that question. Um, we have major utility enhancements on the roadmap uh, for our avatars. And I can tell you that attributes will very much play a part in the enhancement utility. Now, what, in the enhanced utility. Now, what that means is that, um, that we've watched kind of this market develop, especially in, in blockchain fantasy sports. And we've seen how a lot of companies have been able to take a lot of these assets and create really fun ways uh, to, um, to create engagement and earn rewards and add value assets and we're going to do the same thing. So I want you to think about these very broad stroke ideas and understand that, that we have all of these things on our roadmap and some of them are in development and some of them will come out later but um, but the avatar uh, is actually going to be quite a, um, a a big asset within our game. Um, think of token gated contests for holders of certain avatars. Think of time-based enhanced prizes based on which avatars you hold. So imagine there may be a day where if you happen to hold a cowboy in your wallet, uh, for that week you might earn a multiple uh, on your prizes uh, or a avatar with a certain goggle or helmet or color. Um, a lot of that ideation will be coming to fruition. So um, that's going to create a lot of engagement 
uh, trading value around the avatars. Um, we are developing some highly engaging games within the game that I can't really talk about right now, but that, that involve avatars, that involve multiple avatars, that involve characteristics around them, that will enhance a lot of things, create gated entries into really cool contests that am amplify utility and gameplay. Um, and again, I'm not going to go into detail around it other than to tell you that these are things that are going to be coming this year uh, and they're going to be very exciting and they're going to create a frenzy of activity in that category. We expect the demand for avatars to grow significantly as we introduce these features. Um, this is already being done heavily in other gaming platforms. To those of you that play some of these games, you will recognize that. I will also tell you that we expect that as we grow this community over the course of the coming months, that we will sell out of our avatar. Uh, and once we do so, uh, we will introduce a second avatar collection to allow people to come into the game. But that collection will never have the utility that the Genesis avatar collection has. You will always be required to own a Silks avatar so that you have an identity and a license to race in our game. But the only avatars that will ever have a right to mint in advance of the general community on a one-to-one -one ratio will be the Silks Genesis avatars. And we expect that as early as next season uh, that we could see the first 10,000 horses sold out instantly because avatar holders will get a one-to-one -one right to buy that horse in a short window of time on an unrevealed basis. Um, and I'll talk shortly about um, other things related to our mint, but that's a big deal. Uh, and we believe that will be uh, one of the most valuable assets within the game. Um, <clears throat> uh, there was a question around fractionalizing or renting out avatars. And I can tell you that we do not have on our roadmap and do not foresee anytime soon a function where you will be able to fractionalize your avatar or rent it out temporarily to somebody. So hopefully that answers whoever's question that was. Um, there were a whole bunch of questions around transparency. How many horses have been sold? How many avatars have been minted? How much prize money has been paid out? And I can tell you that all of that data is transparently available on the blockchain. And if you don't know how to access that data, put in a ticket and somebody from our community will show you how to do it. It's all very visible. Every dollar we've paid out in prize money is visible on the blockchain. Every avatar minted and sold is visible on the blockchain. Um, and the numbers are quite staggering. Every horse that we've sold is visible on the blockchain. So I encourage you to either figure out how to find that information um, or ask our community uh, moderators, managers, and they'll help you with that. I will also tell you that we intend very soon to start publishing leaderboards and other data to share with the community regularly the highlights of prize distribution, races, horse sales, et cetera. The amount of data that drives this game is astronomical and it's fascinating. And I look at it every day and I can't wait for the day when everybody can see all the data that I see and that our team sees. You know, who are the leaders? Who, who, you know, whose horses have performed the best? Um, you know, understanding the analytics around um, thoroughbred horse racing ownership is really quite fascinating and a big driver of the game. No differently than when you analyze fantasy football or fantasy golf or baseball or basketball. Everything in sports is driven by data and statistics, and it's no different in the horse racing industry. And those of you that take the time to really understand that data are the ones that are really going to thrive in this game. Next question uh, category was around communication. I hinted to it early in this AMA, and I'll address it again. We are committed Featured to enhancing our communications with the community on a regular basis and providing you with all the information that you're seeking to get. 
Um, and we will do that going forward in a more respectful and focused manner. You can have frequent and more substantive communications uh, from the team in the form of AMAs, in the form of articles, in the form of emails and newsletters. Uh, we are going to make an extra effort to over communicate to the community. We want you to feel completely enfranchised. You're as much a part of this as we are, and, uh, and, and we want you to feel that way. <clears throat> next category, I have two more. Um, the next big category is, uh, was breeding rewards. Um, now, while this is a ways away, I think it is important because it really speaks to the economy and to the value of our assets. And so I'm going to touch on it a little bit. Early on in the evolution of the game, we published that not only will you earn rewards from your horse's racing career, but you will continue to earn rewards throughout, throughout the breeding career of your horse as well. In real life, stallions get a breeding fee. So some of the more uh, prominent stallions get upwards of $200,000 every time uh, they breed with a, with a broodmare. Um, and the owner of the broodmare keeps the, uh, the foal. That's how the real world works. Unfortunately, those economics don't work in our game. And so we have to modify and create a proxy for breeding rewards, uh, which is a little different than the real world. And what we did is we said that when a horse, a mare or a stallion, breeds uh, an offspring, a foal, that's sold in our game, our smart contract will recognize the wallet holders of the parents and reward them with a percentage of the sales of the underlying foal. That is still our current model and our current thinking. Although we are continuing to model and explore other creative ways to deliver the same type of rewards based on breeding. There are a lot of ways to do this, from paying a percentage of the sale to creating a perpetual stream of money around the bloodline to a lot of other things that can create really, really fun engagement and real value when you invest in horses that have real strong breeding prospects. And we intend to create the same excitement and the same value propositions on a relative basis as in the real world. Um, so, uh, you know, I can tell you right now that we haven't locked down the exact details around it. We have a couple of years before we're gonna see the first breeding rewards paid out, uh, but it's very much central to our roadmap and uh, we'll be providing you with more updates over the coming months uh, as we lock down um, the modeling around that. Finally, um, the last category um, that I'd like to address uh, that where there were a lot of questions is around what I'll refer to as content. Um, as you've seen from the early release of our Alpha Racing Portal, uh, our intention is to build the most significant horse racing portal ever seen in the sport. We will reintroduce rich content and articles like you saw uh, when Nick was with us. Um, we'll be building out that department and rebuilding it incredibly relevant. Uh, we'll be outsourcing to third party uh, content producers as well as building an internal team to provide more in-depth analysis, rankings, uh, and other data and analytics around our, uh, around our game, which is very important. If you look at professional sports, professional sports wouldn't exist if you didn't have pregame, game time, and postgame content. If you didn't have articles in newspapers in the sports section, if you didn't have major commentators talking about the game and making people feel savvy, and if you didn't have the ability to talk to your friends around what happened yesterday, uh, at the game, and it's no different in horse racing. Um, I talk to people all the time about my horse forming, and what do I do with them? You know, I have a horse that ran three times, came in fifth three times, led the pack three times. What do I do with that horse? You know, what do I really do with that horse? The answer to that question was they're going to keep racing them in lower and lower races until they find the sweet spot, and that horse breaks its maiden and wins. 
and then they'll figure out what to do in that particular case. But we'll be we'll be providing a lot of that content and reintroducing it soon. Um, in terms of the ra racing portal, we have multiple. Um, uh, you know, we have incredibly rich sources of data. Um, you're, there's going to be one place where you can watch all the races, where you can see the results, where you can read commentary, where you can research your horses, buy all kinds of really cool things. Remember, there has never been a, 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 liquid, a, a, a stock market or a liquid exchange for horses the way we've created. We've literally created a derivative marketplace for the real world and married that with the action that takes place in the real world of the sport. That combination, when it's fully functional, is going to change this game. And we're all going to be a part of it. So that's our goal. Our goal is to create a, a, a be-all and end-all um, nirvana that will give you everything that you get at, in literally the best fantasy sports applications and more. There isn't a fantasy sports application where you can click on a player and watch his last play. You'll be able to do that in our game one day, one day soon. Um, you'll be able to read all the articles that are out there produced by us. You'll be able to research by all kinds of parameters, including the free market. Uh, you'll be able to socialize your thoughts within your community. There's going to be so much coming. And it's probably the most exciting thing for me around the game is the racing portal. Um, I can also tell you that we've had many data firms reach out to us wanting to build analytical tools that they can then license to our users, um, similar to the way they do in other fantasy sports. Um, we're going to try to do some of that internally so that we can provide access to our community. But there will also be businesses that will form that will give even richer access. Uh, and that's a great sign as to how people see our community and see the prospects. of. And, you know, you'll be able to access pedigree data, trading data, performance data, live racing feeds, social media tools, all of this will be integrated into a single portal, and you've seen the beginning of it form in its very rudimentary stages as it exists right now. Um, that covers, uh, it was literally, um, I think, 15 buckets that I, that I bundled the 50 or so questions uh, into, um, and that pretty much covers everything that I really wanted to talk about on a granular level tonight. Uh, as you can see, there's an endless amount of work to do to build a world-class gaming platform uh, on the foundation that we've already built. We have the capital. We have an incredible community. We have the biggest partners in the space. And I can tell you there are more coming. We have the game. We have the team. Rome was not built in one day. It's only been 15 months since we started, and we are considered one of the most glorious and successful projects of Web3. We're one of the few actually functional games and rich communities in the space, and we've done it in a very short period of time. We are only scratching the surface, and there is so much more to come. I'm personally looking forward to an incredible rest of the year as we build up to the culmination uh, and conclusion of our first year of racing. We have a long way to go um, with incredible prizes, rewards, lots of announcements, lots of new partners, lots of new functionality. Um, it just takes time. We want to do it the right way. Uh, and we, we want to build a world-class product that's going to last for a very, very long time. So with that, again, I'm going to conclude. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to turn the floor back over uh, to Ben. I don't know if there are any questions uh, that were submitted that uh, you would like me to answer. If there are, I'm happy uh, to uh, take the next 10 minutes to answer any. If not, I'm, um, uh, I'm happy to uh, turn the floor back over to you. So, Ben, the uh, floor is yours. Okay, great. Um, so when we launched the game, 
we were very clear that we can't control the movement of horses, right? So we tokenize and we sell every horse that's born and registered uh, with the jockey club. Now, some of those horses are going to be exported to different markets uh, to race in those markets or to those markets. Uh, I know that there are many holders that have horses that are racing in Canada. And what I can tell you is that Canada is a really good example, but it really holds true for a lot of markets. Um, Canada uh, has a two month racing season. When they're done with that racing season, those horses are gonna come back to the US and as many of them. And so uh, we expect um, that you'll have many opportunities uh, to race in the US. Um, notwithstanding that, I think Troy mentioned that he's in discussions with the Canadian uh, uh, racetracks and that we are hopeful that at some point uh, very soon we'll be able to announce that we will be paying uh, rewards and be able to track and integrate um, the Canadian market into our platform, the Canadian racing uh, data into our platform in a manner where we can actually pay prizes. The gating factor for us is technology and the data feed. And once that happens, um, we expect that we will make an announcement that we will start paying out prizes internationally in certain markets. Our goal is to do that as we grow internationally across many markets. Uh, and I can tell you that it is in our roadmap uh, that in the not too distant future, we expect to launch Game of Silks in many different countries that have of horses where racing is a very big part of their culture. Um, we're in discussions with some of the largest players in some of these countries. Um, there's an enormous amount of interest in uh, beyond what you can imagine. Um, and, uh, um, and as soon as we have tangible data to tangible information to report to you, we will. We're very careful not to share uh, or promise anything that isn't real. And so I can't speak to more than that except to say that that's the state of where we are today. Yep, so the original model uh, contemplates paying out more to broodmares than to stallions. Um, and the reason being that a stallion can have many offspring in a year, whereas broodmare is limited to one. And so we contemplated trying to find a balance of sorts. It's not perfect. Um, but again, all of that modeling is still taking place right now. And what we release will be, what we ultimately release uh, will be consistent with um, ensuring that everybody's getting an appropriate relative amount of value. But it's still very, remember that we currently have two-year-olds uh, in our game. Those two-year-olds uh, at the earliest would start breeding, you know, at the end of their third year, having uh, an offspring at the, a, a full at the end of their fourth year and that full becoming a yearling at the end of their fifth year. So we have a ways to go, um, but I, I'm pretty confident that we will have that uh, in the course of the next six months and be able to publish something to, to the community that I think everybody's going to find very compelling. Uh, yep, Ben, thank you. Um, and again, uh, to the community, thank you. Uh, I know this was a long session with a lot of content. Um, we're going to try to do this more frequently going forward. Um, and I hope everybody's enjoying the game, enjoying the camaraderie, the community, all the entertainment aspects and social aspects around the game. Uh, and again, I'm just going to reiterate, we are so early on and there's so much to come. So thank you again and uh, look forward to seeing you.